In this video, you will become more familiar with web development, and this will enable you to have a better foundation before creating a Disco Bot dashboard. We explain how the internet and web servers work, what Pug, a template engine is, and why we actually use it, what is a RESTful API, and how do we make the world a better place. So, let's begin. So, how does HTML and the internet work? So, what happens when you go to a website? Well, the client asks a web server for data. They it usually asks for a HTML when you're using a browser, and it sends a GET request. So, here is your browser, also called the client. We send a GET request to google.com to the server. now. The server says OK, and then it sends it back, and the browser renders this HTML into content. Pretty simple. So, where exactly is this server located? Well, a domain name is translated into a IP address by DNS. So DNS is the phone book of the internet. So just like a phone number, this is an IP address, google.com, actually points to this IP right here, might change in the future, and this IP is located in Utah. So, what happens when you go to a website? This is the complete diagram, so your browser sends a request, DNS actually converts this google.com to this IP, so this is what it actually sends it to, and then we get a code 200, which means OK. You may have seen 404 for not found. Well, 200 means OK. And then it sends it back. There we go. So, what actually are websites made from? So, there are three elements to a website, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And they all have a single function. So, nouns. HTML is the nouns, what there is, so for example, heading with text, that is something there, there's structure, that is structure, so basically the adjectives, the style, what we're describing, we're describing, we want a white background color, which documents in HTML are by default, we can have a red one, whatever color we want, so verbs. Now, this is doing, so you can add like cool particle effects, alert the user of something, and we do this with JavaScript, and it's similar to Node.js, we can't use imports, we do it a different way. So we actually change the heading text after three seconds, that's something you can do with that. Okay, so what is HTML? Hypertext markup language is fancy word is code that structures web pages. Okay, so when we actually connect to a website, we are given HTML. Now, how is this converted? So browsers actually have built-in HTML parsers, which converts it into content. Now, this is H1, this is heading one, heading two, heading three, and you can see heading one being the biggest heading, it's structured in this way. And it goes down like that. And it's all the content is in a body. And in the head tags, which is not shown on here, which show the metadata of the document, like the title, the scripts, etc. Now, in summary, HTML are nouns that structure web pages. Browsers combine HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to complete web pages. The browser is usually called the client. Typing in the URL bar sends a GET request to a web server. And there are many types of requests, GETs, POST, DELETE, PUT. All domain names also represent an IP address. PUG, how does it work? Well, we actually want to use JavaScript in HTML code. How do we do it? Well, there are things called template engines with unique syntax that can actually do this. Now, 
the syntax is similar to HTML, but it's not actually the same. So, what is a template engine? That now the technical definition is just software that combines templates with a data model to produce documents. So that doesn't really make sense in this context. The contextual definition is it's a package that allows us to use JavaScript in HTML-like syntax to produce HTML documents. So which template engine do we use? That well. <laughs> There's many template engines out there. Now, Pug, formerly known as Jade, is what we're going to be using. So, here we have the HTML output. We have a header. We have H1 with ID core, a P class lead, and a header there. So, we can simply write this as header like this, H1, P.lead. We can also implement variables in there, input variables. This is from pughtml.com. It allows you to convert between HTML and Pug, and we'll be using it in this section. It could be different by the time you're watching it, and it might be gone. It depends. So, why are we using this thing called Pug? Well, it provides simpler syntax than most other template engines. So there are many other template engines, including handlebars and things like EJS, but this makes the code easier to write and understand this one. And I find it, it uses less lines of code, so it's pretty simple to deal with. But downside is it's slightly harder to learn. It has its own special features, including includes, and also its own syntaxes more different than HTML, which may be confusing at times. So, in summary, Pug allows us to use JS in HTML. We can use for loops, if loops, import, and much more with Pug. Now, we will not be showing the syntax in this video, but we'll actually show it when we make the dashboard. I encourage you to look at the docs. The link is in the resources section down below. But anyway, that's the basics of Pug. Hopefully this helps. There we go. How does it work? What is a REST API? What is an API, first of all? Well, an API is an abbreviation of Application Programming Interface. And it allows us to interact with apps via code. So, an interface is like... Think of like a UI. UI is a user interface and a user interface allows the user to interact with certain elements on a web page, for example. And also, an API might be behind that. So a HTTP API, when we create a message on Discord, for example, we actually use the UI, user interface, and we press a few buttons and we send a message. And without that user interface, we'd have to type a bunch of code in to actually manually do it. And that's what we're going to do when we make a Discord bot. So what is an API? APIs can mean anything from NPM packages, HTTP services, and more. Now, NPM, we'll be using some NPM packages, of course, to simplify this very much. HTTP. So if you've ever used a website, chances are you're using one now. HTTP is the internet, basically anything on the internet that involves web servers. Now, what is REST? So we have REST API from here. So what actually is REST? It's not sleep in this case. I don't think it has anything to do with sleep, to be fair. But it's called representational state transfer, just the word's a bit more intimidating than the concept. So it just provides web system standards for making communication easier. Okay, so what are RESTful routes? They are routes that link HTTP verbs to create, read, update, delete operations. 
Okay, so a post request, when we sign up to a website, we create a user in the database, and the route here is slash users. Now the route is where we chop off the first part of the URL, so that is like discord.com slash API. We're not, this is not a Discord example specifically, but it can apply to any website here. So that is what a route is. Now get, when we get a user profile details, we need to specify somewhere which user we are getting. Now that is, we do that by the ID and we actually specify the, the ID can be anything and we specify it in the route here in this example. So this is a read action slash operation from the database. Now put, in this case it means replace the user document with a new one. Patch would mean, and patch is a HTTP verb, so that would mean replace some fields on the user. But put, in this context, we are actually editing a website pro profile and this is just a user, I should mean a user profile, so just a website user profile, we are updating. Delete, we're deleting an account, at the user, specify the user ID, cool. REST API example, so Discord's API is based on two core layers. Now it has a HTTPS slash REST API, just a REST API for general operations, so like creating a channel, etc., and a persistent WebSocket-based connections. A WebSocket is not in the scope of this course, but I believe we can do pretty much anything with the H uh, the REST API. Packages like Discord.js actually do the WebSocket stuff for us, and we don't need to worry about that. So. Discord's API allows us to make Discord bots. And here we have create a message, example, delete all reactions. We Now, as I said, the ID is variable here. It, it can be anything, therefore it's like in these angle brackets. Get user, we specify the user ID, it returns the user object. So it actually returns a JSON object and we can actually convert that, when we're using a programming language, we can actually convert that into an object of that language, and we're using JS, and it's JSON is good with JS, so that's good. And we can also edit a message, and in this case it's a patch, so put and patch are somewhat interchangeable, but we're using patch here. Now, why does why does this make communication easier? Well, if there was only one language in the world, no one would have to spend extra time learning languages just to communicate with other people across the world. Furthermore, if there was one style of API, it would be more predictable and easier to work with. So we know when we send a delete request, something's probably going to get deleted on the server. We know that when we send a post request, we can assume something is going to get created on the server. When we get something, we're just sending a harmless read operation. When we edit something, we're just changing something in the database. In summary, APIs allow us to interact with other apps via code. RESTful APIs are used by the most major websites, including Discord themselves. RESTful routes represent create, read, update, delete, CRUD actions. And they are exciting and make the world a better place. So, now you've learned some basics of web development, we can actually get on to making a Discord bot dashboard. So, let's get started.